What is up YouTube, Risks HD here, back again today with another Modern Warfare video. Uh, I've been really excited to bring you guys this video because finally, 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 I got my first tactical nuke in Modern Warfare. It's been a really long time coming, but I'm proud that I finally managed to get one. Uh, the gameplay is a bit more defensive than my usual running gun style, but when I realised I was on a big streak and I really just wanted the nuke, uh, I just locked down the building on Hackney Yard and played my life. But yeah, I hope you guys do enjoy nonetheless. So, I think most of you guys would probably want to see the class setup that I was using when I did get the nuke, and the class setup should be on your screen right now. Uh, the ZLR 18-inch Deadfall Barrel is there to increase the damage ranges and add sound suppression, which are both great bonuses on this gun. Uh, the gun's ranges, as it is, are a bit pitiful, so the, this barrel does really help you out in that department. Uh, the 40 round drone mags and sleight of hand weapon pack are really essential with this gun because it just spits out so many bullets with the high rate of fire and I really don't think you can get away with 25 round mags and sleight of hand or just the 40 round drum mag without sleight of hand. Um, and finally the stipple grip tape and no stock are there just to increase the speed of the class really. Um, I find that the no stock still works pretty well on the gun even after the nerf uh, but if you find it quite hard to control I'd recommend swapping over to either the tack laser or the 5 mm laser. So some of the more astute of you out there uh, might notice that I don't use this class throughout the entire video and that's simply because I ran out of ammo and had to pick up both an AK and a growl. Uh, hopefully you guys don't mind that too much it's just I ran out of ammo a bit unfortunately and while I do run scavenger and munitions box I was kind of playing the building a bit and scavenging obviously doesn't really help unless you're running over dead bodies uh, which I wasn't um, but yeah I'm just really glad I got the nuke in the end also I mentioned at the start of this video that this is a much more defensive gameplay than I'm used to normally I'm just rushing around just trying to get feeds but once I realized I was on the streak I decided to slow down and play much much more passively than I usually do to get the nuke so some people here might be looking for advice on how to get your first nuke and obviously this is my first nuke on Modern Warfare so I'm not exactly full of tips uh, but I'd recommend playing with a setup that you're comfortable with and you know inside out uh, what I mean by that especially is you want to know the gunfights that you kind of can win and definitely can't win and challenge them accordingly. Far too often when I'm playing I just try an ego challenge and just fly around every corner to gun people even when I'm weak and to just back down and recover health or move to a different power position. Um, but yeah that's definitely one of the biggest tips that I'd recommend for when going on streaks. And also obviously another key tip is to be conscious of spawns. Uh, my favourite game mode in this game is hardpoint and whilst the spawns aren't 100% predictable uh, because of the squad based spawn system in Modern Warfare, they're usually quite good and with good map knowledge you can kind of position yourself correctly to get an advantage in gunfights and just know where the enemies are coming from in general. Uh, also when I play, I usually play with my brother and the more people you play with the easier it becomes to manipulate spawns so if you're playing with like a party of five uh, you'll definitely find it much easier to be able to know exactly where the enemies are coming from and to just uh, lock down spawns. So this leads quite nicely onto my next point which is locking down power positions. Uh, obviously in this streak I'm locking down this building uh, quite a lot but of all the places to lock down on this map it actually makes the most sense I guess. Uh, from here you can see the second hard point and where the close spawns are so uh, if the enemies are spawning there then you can just kill them off spawn and if they're spawning further away this is quite a nice spot to prevent them from reaching the hard point. Uh, from this building you also have quite a nice line of sight on the third hard point as well. And if you have the good spawns on the third hard point, you can make the enemy spawn really, really far away from it. It's kind of ridiculous. On top of all of this, the fourth hard point is actually in the Cromwell building. So being positioned in this building is obviously advantageous to protect it. Uh, and finally, the fifth hard point. Um, if you're in this building and your team also also push through the warehouse, you can make the enemy spawn all the way back out by the second hard point, which is just absolutely mental. Um, but yeah, that's why of all the places on this map, it's quite a good place to lock down. Um, but yeah, it is a bit shameful that I was camping in it for quite a long time. But yeah, I'm clearly not saying that people should just play really, really slow paced. But what I am saying that is if you want to get streaks, you have to position yourself on the map correctly and rotate around to the different power positions for each of the new hard points. Also, I think it is definitely worth me bringing up the topic of skill based matchmaking and reverse boosting in Modern Warfare. Um, if you guys don't know, skill based matchmaking is basically where you get matched against players of similar skill. I mean, it's not quite 100%, so if you're a 1.2 KD player, you're not only playing 1.2 KD players. Um, but compared to previous games, the average skill of your players will be much closer to your own. So that's why, like in Black Ops 4, for example, I had like a 2. Point something KD, and in this game, I only have like a 1.2 something, I think. So obviously it compresses down your KD quite a lot because you're playing against harder opponents. Um, but the first thing that I wanted to say is that I never reverse boost when I play. And that's probably uh, why I only have one nuke I guess. And if you don't know what reverse boosting is, it's basically where you either tank your stats so you play against the easier lobbies. Or you have like a second account that you join onto so then you can get easier lobbies. 
Um, but yeah, I find the matchmaking really weird in this game. I have a pretty bad connection because I live in the middle of nowhere, and because I'm an above average player, uh, the pool of players that the game is willing to put me against is much smaller. And basically, as a result of both of these factors, I frequently play against the same people every day. There's one dude called Mook Lovin, I think. I think that's his name. And he has uh, this clan tag as well, so I know I'm not getting matched against uh, different people every time. And I play against this guy all the time. I play against so many people. Um, I would be convinced that it was just because I have a bad connection. I don't live too uh, near too many people, so you know, uh, I could get why there wouldn't be a very large pool of players. But when I was back at university, which is in a city, uh, I have a great connection and I played against different people, but I played against those different people very frequently as well, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, the matchmaking in this game is really weird. I did get this gameplay just after I'd been sniping a bit. I think it was just after the Ritek AMR came out. And I was having a lot of fun trying it out. But obviously I'm not the best at sniping. Uh, if, As you guys know from watching my Learning to Snipe series. Or at least I'm not as good with a sniper as I am with a red gun say. So maybe I got a slightly easier lobby because of that. Because this definitely was not kind of the calibre of my regular lobby. Um, but yeah, anyway though, I hope that I haven't rambled for too long or not long enough, but if there's any gameplay left, I'll let it play out in the background. Uh, I hope you all did enjoy the video though. If you did, then please do drop a like and subscribe to the channel, as it would be greatly appreciated as we're on the road to 500 subscribers. Uh, comment down below what you'd like to see next on the channel, and as always, this has been Risks HD, and I hope all you legends have a fantastic week.